Jeff Ferris on the Hat Homestead. Today's video I'm going to talk just about grounding my solar system. So my solar power here off grid, I'm going to show you how I've got everything grounded. Right there is my earth ground. It's six feet in the ground and I got that copper wire going to that copper post and that's a six gauge. I still need to anchor it to the barn just so I don't have it flexing around there. Make it look a little prettier. But I, I put it through one of these guys here just to make it a little bit more convenient. And let's go inside and see what I got. So right here you have the ground bar coming in, or the grounding wire coming in. It goes up in here and it connects right there. Why I did that loop? And there's a lot of space in there, so I thought maybe I'll just double it up. So you can see it comes out the other side. Now, as you can see on this ground, every one of these breakers goes into a black wire, which has, in addition to it, a neutral wire, which is a white, but also the copper. So every one of these will have a copper inside it. So every one has to be connected to this bus bar. This is called the grounding bus bar. Now on here, I have a white one. The reason why I have a white is because that white one is going around and it's going over here to my charge controller. So it's actually grounding the box of my charge controller. Why I use white, this is 10 gauge wire. I pulled it actually straight from one of these. So I had left over 10-2 wire, as they call it. And so I just pulled out this. I left it covered and I wanted to use white to identify that as my charge controller, charge controller ground. And so we have this six gauge black wire right there. Now what I did with this is this one is gonna actually come all the way down. And as we follow the wire, it goes right over here to my negative. So on my main negative, I've grounded my batteries. My batteries are now grounded. And I use the six gauge because A, I have plenty of six gauge, because I bought a big old spool of it right there, because it was actually cheaper to buy it that way than to buy the exact footage I needed. So, but anyhow, so the six gauge black is my ground going there. My inverter, has a ground right here and that I'm using is the black and that one is the same black that came from the white on the charge controller when I want to strip that wire there so when I want to strip that wire I use the white for the charge controller and a black for the inverter so as the inverter comes up it basically follows the same same line except it's going to go all the way up come in here and right there is where it's at. So I know by looking at this that that black goes to my inverter, that white goes to my charge controller, and both of those are my grounds. So that's how I identify that. You probably could have used bare all the way through, but to me, I just don't like that exposed wire. So this way I've got it all covered up going in there. So that covers my grounding on the panel. So I've got my inverter grounded, my batteries grounded, my charge controller grounded, all to this bus bar, all these breakers grounded to the bus bar, and then the, bu and then the bus bar leads a line out to that ground I just showed you to start off the video. Now my panels are grounded into onto the pole and into the ground. I'll show you that here in a second. But let me show you this copper wire here. The bare copper, six gauge. I got a roll of 25 feet. This is grounding wire. This is what I used out to the earth ground. So now my solar panels, they're grounded by the frame itself. So when I bolted the solar panels to the framing or to these uni struts, that grounds them to the uni struts. The uni struts then are grounded to this black pole here. And this black pole connects down here right at 
that lever down there allows me to twist my panels so that I can adjust to the sun but it also makes that connection to the pole that's inside it which goes then down into the ground and it is one foot into the ground and then this whole cement slab is four feet in the ground and then what I also did was I put some rebar in there and tied the rebar all together and also tied it to the pole and that's also two feet in the ground. From what I understand, that should be enough to ground the panels. Mm -hmm.